Thank you for the introduction. Um, similar to the talks this morning, I will rather prefer to give you some ideas on our work and also to, to raise some maybe critical uh, aspects which should be targeted in the future instead of going into technical details too much. So what will be uh, the main outline of the talk for the next 15 to 20 minutes? First, I will give a motivation um, for our approach. Then I will um, give some global uh, perspective on our system architecture. Uh, also some short introduction to a few uh, algorithms. And then we come to the main part of the talk, the task dependent representation generation, and therefore the concept, and also some results are presented. And finally, I will conclude with a summary. So starting with the motivation, um, we think that the, the current research um, is mostly focused on uh, certain driver assistance <coughs> functionalities. So if you go then at a later stage to uh, full situation support or um, that you will have a system which can handle all situations and you want to do this by just connecting these independent uh, assistance systems, from our point of view, this will not work. Um, because the resulting system um, is not generated or made for these uh, complex scenarios. And also the design process which is currently used mostly focuses on um, a use case based design. So uh, if you go for a full uh, support of all situations, you might uh, expect that this will also be, uh, become difficult. So what is the solution from our point of view? We think that uh, an advanced driver assistance system in the future has to be somehow generic and integrated, so it's not specifically targeted at a, a certain functionality or situation. Instead, the system uh, incorporates design principles which are inspired by the human or the human brain. And the long-term goal or idea is that after building some kind of rich uh, future system, we are able to learn which uh, traffic situations are critical from an experienced driver. So um, to just give you an idea what our current test platform is, so we have some kind of uh, Honda Legend test vehicle equipped with a stereo rig. We also have a standard radar and also some laser sensors and uh, we have access to the CAN data, and also for online or real-time processing, we have a number of PCs in the trunk. So this is a full flavor system architecture. I will simplify this a little bit so you do not get bothered too much with details. Um, so the idea is the system contains of four main building blocks. These are first the static domain specific tasks. So these are the tasks which are, which are tailored uh, for uh, driver assistance systems. So there we have some unmarked road detection and also marked road detection approaches. Um, there I will not go into detail here. I will just uh, shortly introduce uh, the scene classification in one of the following slides. And then we have the next large building block, which is the where pathway, so everything about the location of the objects within our current environment. Um, this is the, the major part here, so there we go into further details later, um, which will not be part of the target, so the generic uh, object tracking procedure. Uh, there will be rather some um, about the environmental representation and also the task-dependent representation generation, which are somehow interconnected at this, uh, at this stage. And then we have the third large building block, which is the uh, what pathway, we call. So these are um, bound at the specific object classes. So here we have some generic uh, front end of our uh, driver assistance system, which is some kind of attention system. And we have uh, also some generic classification uh, algorithm, but we have also some specific algorithms for uh, traffic sign recognition. 
And the final part is the environmental interaction. So these uh, incorporates everything which is bound to the actuator control or the output. Uh, for reasons of time, I will just um, uh, go not into detail here, but you will see some results later which show a visualization of the internal processing. So coming now to the, the first part, the static domain-specific tasks. Um, here we'll just go uh, for an algorithm for scene classification. So here the idea is that um, based just on a camera image, you are able to specify a global char characteristic of the scene, and then you are able to use this um, for a task or um, context-dependent uh, interpretation of your current algorithms. So you are able to use different algorithms in different scenarios or uh, scene categories or also parameterize your algorithms uh, differently. The next part is a short introduction about the uh, what pathway. So here the idea is that we have some kind of general or generic front end, which is the attention system. Therefore, we are able to search for a number of classes within the environment and are able to detect uh, objects. Um, and then we either use some generic method to either detect cars or other things, or we use some scenaric methods, um, specific me methods, sorry, for the classification of traffic signs. So now we come to the uh, main part of the talk, um, the where pathway. So here the idea is the, uh, to represent the spatial information of the current scene. So the question is if you now have a number of algorithms, they all have some output um, for some specific information for the current scene and therefore your environment. Um, there must be some generic procedure for the storage and also for the combination of the different algorithms. Um, and also, this should be easy to uh, further transport the information to high, higher level algorithms or behavior generation at a future point. So what is the idea or the concept? Um, now here, the algorithms are just simplified as processing boxes in the beginning so there we have the unmarked road detection and marked road detection. These algorithms are now uh, from a similar category. Um, these can also be modulated uh, within the system by a number of inputs, and they get their specific sensory data. So the idea is now that you uh, transform each uh, result of the algorithms into one specific layer, and within this layer you are able to do on the one hand temporal integration, you can about, but also if you have sensor measurements from previous frames, uh, compensate your ego motion uh, and therefore are able to have still some uh, information of the environment um, even if you have not uh, recent sensor readings. Um, if you now have a similar layers for the different algorithms, you're also uh, can easily combine these layers um, in a specific step which is dependent on the task uh, or other uh, input data you have. Um, so here at this stage you can combine these layers uh, in a generic fashion um, and therefore uh, enhance your information even further. So if you want to extract maybe your ego lane or an opposing lane based on the current uh, scene uh, context uh, and also the information from your processing layers. This is a simple combination of the different storage layers. If you now extend this to the uh, additional processing algorithms in a similar fashion, you are not only able to uh, combine similar, similar algorithms as shown before, but you are also able to combine other algorithms um, as the traffic sign uh, layer or algorithm. Um, therefore, if you now want to have the task to find a current position where you would have to stop within your environment, um, given your unmarked road detection, your marked road layer, and also some kind of uh, traffic sign layer, then this is just 
again, a simple combination of the layers, and then you get the output within your current uh, environment. And if you now incorporate also objects, um, in this case cars, you are also able to uh, find a position which you should not uh, overgo because there's a car in front of you. Therefore, we also come or already come to the results. So here we have the um, just the simple processing, which is done on a, a frame basis. So for each frame, the algorithms have some output. Here we have the storage layer. So this is temporarily integrated. There's also some uh, generic tracking procedure. So if uh, at the beginning there might be only a few hits on the traffic sign, but these are here then tracked. And also we have the information on further frames. The combination down here is uh, the second layer combination, so uh, targeted at traffic signs. And here the objects, in this case the car, are also incorporated. The video will run uh, two times. So first, the overall scene is just uh, processed once. Oops. Um, and then we will stop at certain positions where uh, the processing changes, but the combination is still the same. So it doesn't matter if the information is present or not. The combination of the layers uh, doesn't change. So now you see that the traffic sign is detected, and there's this uh, yellow bar you see, and then it continues until uh, the first lane marker is detected, and then the system again stops, and your ego lane and opposing lane is separated, and then it just continues till the end. So with this, I'm already at the end of my presentation. Um, I showed you some intelligent system design, which uh, took its motivation from biology. Um, the task-dependent representation generation uh, is a generic approach to combine uh, different processing results uh, with different layers. Um, you can therefore dynamically switch or adapt the processing dependent on the current task. Um, you can also save computational time because you only have to compute these combinations which are necessary. Um, and for higher level applications, you can just use these uh, outputs as some kind of generic feature uh, for learning or behavior algorithms. So and with this, um, I hope I showed some kind of uh, flexible system design um, which can adapt its processing and representations based on the current task and also environment.